What's up guys? So we're back here in the Steam Deck and I just want to go over what the Thermal Pad mod actually is. I'm going to apologize for the noise in the background. If you hear it, it's the printer. Uh, nothing I can really do about it. It's right behind me. Hopefully it's not too crazy. Thermal Pad placement. So if you've seen my previous videos, I always talk about thermal pads. Yeah, thermal pads, thermal pads, thermal pads. Like you should do a thermal pads with or without the fan mod and real quick the fan mod is basically when you cut a hole in your back plate to expose this fan right here which is the main fan so the system runs on what we call a negative pressure system meaning this fan is sucking in air and air is coming through every orifice including the vent that is right here in this area and big issue with that air resistance and it's a lot of air resistance so um by cutting that fan hole we reduce air resistance, which ultimately will cool our system down. But in turn, that reduces the amount of air that is coming through this little slot that's typically right here on our steam decks for air to come through and up and over. So when our heat shield's in place, imagine the back plate is on here. There's a slot here with a bunch of holes for air to go through. Air hits here, hits this air channel, goes up and into the fan. But since we cut a hole on top, that's kind of an issue. So there is a back plate sold on AliExpress that has vent holes cut along the sides. And that does help with air resistance quite a bit, but it runs to an issue where your most important, well, I wouldn't say most important, but your very important components known as your controller, which is right here. And then your VRMs, which is scattered around here and your MOSFETs down here, which have these thermal pads on them are kind of not actively cooled anymore but though they are not actively cooled they are still tied into the system meaning they are tied into this heat shield meaning they're touching the heat shield hence these little pads uh cutouts right here so what the thermal pad mod is is to tie that sim sim system better together with our dissipating system which is this heat pipe that is connected to the fan that blows hot air off the top which cools the overall system so we tie those two together so if you were to open up your heat shield obviously your thermal pads would still be stuck to these points but you would notice this spot right here would be all blacked out i personally cleaned that spot out because i placed thermal pads all along this to this corner which is all along up here to here to tie the heat that was being absorbed by this heat shield to our heat pipe which would help dissipate the heat with those modifications we were able to bring our temperatures down in a reasonable sense meaning um, in our testing our hottest point which was our vrms was at 75 degrees which is rated for 100 degrees i believe so in a very safe temps and at the same time we were able to drop apu temperatures as well because we had an extra ventilation port for our fan so meaning there was less air resistance uh coming through the system once again reduce the air resistance here where it was naturally supposed to come through here and every other orifice around the steam deck you're not gonna get so much of the air around and through this port because you cut a hole here and you have less air resistance. Meaning you don't have active cooling on these hotter, hotter parts. So I came with the conclusion and tested it that if you put thermal pads in this area, you have pretty good thermal dissipation for the hotter running components, especially the controller, the MOSFETs, which is covered right here and the arms on top, APU, things like that. So. What I want to go down is what I do to make that happen. So first off, I use one millimeter thermal pads. So the thermal pads I'm using, I'm going to start off from the top. So we want to tie this heat shield to this heat pipe. So what we're going to do is make as much contact to this heat, this heat shield with this heat pipe. So we cut out a bunch of this black, uh, I think it's RFI or it's just for show. It's probably for RFI purposes, but we cut it out so when we place these thermal pads down right here on this heat pad we're making contact with the heat shield so we're tying the two systems in together which will help dissipate the heat off the heat shield onto the heat pipe so i like to do that with one millimeter thick pads 
because it's what I had available and I stacked them so it would make them two millimeter pads. We're gonna take those pads, we're gonna place them right on top of the heat pipe right above the APU bracket. I'm gonna repeat that till about past the bend to right about here because that's kind of where the point where the heat shield kind of is no longer kind of making contact right there. So you wanna make that as much of a contact as possible. So once again, these are one millimeter pads stacked on top of one another to make a two millimeter pad. Secondly, we have our original thermal pad that it goes right here, sits right here, dead center, right in the middle. And that's stock on the fan already. This, there's a cutout here just for that one piece. As we move down, we have our VRM. So we have one here, the one across the center here, 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 and then our controller here and the MOSFETs right there. So you see the MOSFETs already have thermal pads. These are one millimeter pads on each MOSFET. Um, we did that because I noticed when the original thermal pad, which is right here, which sits right here on our heat shield, wasn't making great contact with these MOSFETs. And you could tell because the because there wasn't so much of an indent on the thermal pad. So we took some in the center right here and we put one millimeter pads on each MOSFET and then we put, we're gonna go ahead and place our thermal pad right on top of that. It's gonna sit just like that. And then we got a couple more VRMs right here. So the one right adjacent to it, the one to the right is a square looking thermal pad. Well, we'll skip that for now because I cannot find that. Are you stupid or something? But it's a rectangular thermal pad and I'll find it in a second, but thermal pad that goes up here next to the, the one of the RAM chips. And that's this one. You don't need to add any thermal pads to this. The stock one works just fine. Down here, we have another, another one right here. And I don't know where the stock one is. We're gonna use this one that it's about four millimeters worth of thermal pads stacked together. We're gonna place it right on top of this chip right here, which I believe is another VRM. I could be wrong, but it does have its own uh, thermal pad. So if you see that, you don't need to add any more to that. You only needed to add to this heat pipe and these MOSFETs. Okay, secondly, um, we have our controller here. Notice that my thermal pads look very <laughs> fucked up because we did a lot of testing and we fucked them up and I had to end up adding extra thermal pad to them to just make, have more surface area so help absorb heat. So we're gonna place that right here. So the controller's right here. If you have a stock one, you don't really need to do that. Again, it's just the MOSFETs here in the center, heat pipe. Everything else is pretty much stuck in this system. Oh, you know what? I fucked up. This is not for the APU. This pad right here, you see the sticker one, is for this down here. Okay, so the only reason I bring that up, I messed up, sorry. This is for the APU. This should already be on your system. It's about a millimeter thick, 1.5 to be exact, I believe. Before we put this pad on, there's a pretty decent height difference between these two. And this is another spot where you wanna add, I think you should add an additional one millimeter thick thermal pad. This one's not cut to perfect height, but that's okay as long as we're making contact with the chip. Then we're gonna take our old thermal pad, place it right on top like so. I'm gonna put this one on an angle and there you go. That's it, and then we're gonna place this back on top, screw everything in. But remember, all we really did was add thermal pads on the MOSFETs, one here on the VRM to the left, and uh, two millimeter thick on the heat sinks. Remember, everything else is one millimeter. This one's two millimeters on the top. And our heat shield's gonna go on top. So we're gonna throw this bad boy on. Bada bing, bada boom. Notice that the thermal pads are touching the top. It's gonna make it a little bit bulbous here, but that's quite all right. It's not a big deal. Make sure these little clips fall in line. And there you go. That's it. That's how you do a thermal pad upgrade on your Steam Deck. Very simple. And I'll repeat it one more time. All we're doing by adding those thermal pads is we're tying our heat shield to our heat sink right here. or tying those two together, making better compact, uh, contact with our MOSFETs. And that one VRM that was right there and we're just basically allowing the system to transfer more heat to the shield so the shield can take it to our heat uh, pipe. And then the fan blows the heat out of the system. And this is important for, I think, all Steam Decks, but mainly for Steam Decks that have the fan mod because of the fact that 
all the air is going to come through the fan past the least resistance and because of the new holes whether you buy the back plate with all the slit holes or you cut a hole in your back of your steam deck air is going to be less likely to come through here and through every other orifice and is going to want to go here so we're going to make sure our hotter running components make really good contact on our heat shield so we can help dissipate that heat through our heat pipe cool that's a quick video hopefully it was quick um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comments below. Once again, my name is Nas, aka DIY Puppy. I'll catch y'all in the next one.